Hello and welcome to Cooking in the Kitchen with Boom Chang Records and DC Coast to Coast. Today I have very, very special guests and what I love about these guests, it's family. And the thing I love about family, bands, musicians, is how they knit together with vocals. And this group is no different at all. I'd like to introduce to you the Caffrey Brothers. Morning. Good morning. How are you doing? Very well. How are you, Steve? I'm very good. I'm raring to go and I'm excited about hearing (laughs) some of the songs and some of the stories from the past. Lovely. Because you guys have got a bit of history, right? Yep. We're young lads. Uh? We're young lads. Young lads, yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> doesn't matter about age. No. Music doesn't actually go across any age. It just goes across exactly. all ages, doesn't it? So, who's going to start? Do you want to introduce yourself first? I'm Peter. Hello, Peter. I'm Phil. Phil. And I'm Paul. And Paul. And I used to be Mary, obviously. Mary. <laughs> the three <laughs> P's. Yeah, the, the three, three P's. P's. And, and people kind of say whether like the... You know, some people have said, well, like the, the Geordie BGs, I suppose we're the PCs. The PCs. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's best to be something, isn't yes. it? Of course it is. Of course it is, brilliant. But you've been doing music from an early age, haven't you? Well, for as long as we can remember, to be honest with you. It's amazing. It's, me, Pete and Paul obviously grew up in Wall's End. Yep. Um, and music was all around us. Uh-huh. And... Certainly, we used to give concerts in my mum and dad's front garden. That's fantastic. And yet, probably talk in 1959, I mean, Paul was about six, I was about seven. Yeah. Pete was about 11. And we couldn't play the guitars, but we could sing. Uh-huh. And we used to have the guitars and just strum. And we had jumpers. My mum got us some jumpers and, like, embroidered in. I think I had Elvis Presley. You had Fat Domino and you had, you know, uh, right. Richard. You know, so it was like rock and roll era because this was late 50s. Uh-huh. And um, all the kids would come round and watch these three cute kids, I suppose, singing. Right. And um, then we developed from there. I got a drum kit. Uh, I could play the snare, but I used to kick the bass drum because I wasn't that good. <laughs> Pete, learned a bit, Pete learned a big guitar. Uh-huh. And we put some songs together in um, about... 1963, 64-ish, yeah. we would do one or two gigs and right. we played for the whole school. Uh-huh. And I think what was, I suppose what was quite incredible about it was that there wasn't an adult in the room to show us what to do. Right. So, that, so do you think it was natural or did you I, pick it up from radio that you were listening to? Or? Well, we used to, we used to listen to songs, didn't yeah, we? Yeah, we, we, we uh, we've got three older sisters and an older brother and obviously they would be bringing songs into the house. Right. And Phil had this knack where he would pick a single up at 45 he knew who it was, but he didn't. He couldn't read the label. Oh, right. <laughs> um, but Jared, my older brother, would live, listen to the Forces radio stations in Luxembourg, yeah. and he'd go to his local record shop and they'd get the records. And, and we would sit and listen to, like you say, Phil, Little Richard, not the sort of run of the mill singers. Right. It would be what the kids were listening to, Buddy Holly, all these sort of people. Yeah. And whether that sort of rubbed off on us three, I don't know. You just got it very naturally at the time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's probably and we do nice. find it very, we are comfortable singing and always have been. Yeah. And people have said to us, you know, like, because as you know, I teach and mm. we've spoken to people about being nervous. Yeah. And people, one or two people have said, famous people, if, if you're not nervous, it doesn't mean anything to you. I, I disagree with that. Right. I think, I personally feel adrenaline yeah. I might want to go to the toilet you for a want couple that of weeks, but yeah. I want it but I'm not nervous yeah. and I think I was talking to somebody about this and I think the, one of the reasons why I've never been nervous is I think deep down I'm not bothered what anybody thinks no it's the thing it, is you've found your way with your music and your style and you present it and it's yeah. I always say music's very Marmite it's like people either like it or they don't yeah. yes, but you know, and, and you if they don't like it it doesn't mean to say it's not good no it's just it's not their taste it's art yeah of course it is that's brilliant so writing music together you've obviously done that from a young age as you said yeah um, can you remember your first song you ever wrote I can't. I can remember mine. It was rubbish. Was it? <laughs> but, but that wasn't I, the title. But, 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 <laughs> but it was about a bird, a little was bird, it? flying right. bird. Uh, um, and I always talked again through teaching. Some of the students I teach in, in children in schools, they write yeah. far better things. But one of the things I think with songwriting, we we doubt ourselves. Yeah. Because it's you, because you, 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 sometimes you're putting your thoughts on paper. Mm. And there can be, the, the thing with the song is that lyrically, it can mean lots of things to lots of people. Yeah. And that's the beauty of the whole thing. Sometimes and you I, hear that and, voice in your head going, oh, it's not so good, but it's not about it not being good. It might actually reach exactly. somebody else, might not. And know? it's, there's no right and wrong with songwriting. It. It's, it's, it should be easy, shouldn't it? 
But yeah. but it's not because we doubt ourselves. You strive for that perfection. Yeah. You're looking for that extra lyric or you're looking for that extra chord that's going to make, you Definitely. know, touch the heartstrings because we want music to be emotional, don't we? Definitely. We want it to move people. Definitely. Excellent. Excellent. So do you fancy giving us one of your songs then? Yep. Yeah, we will give, this is a song written by Paul and myself. Yeah. Um, it was on one of our CDs and it's a song called Can I Tell You? Brilliant. And I suppose if you're looking at lyrics, Paul had the idea, didn't you? Yeah. And he came in about the artist and the canvas and then he came back the next week and I'd wrote it. Some people have said they think it's, uh, well, maybe I shouldn't say what some people think it's about. Some people have said, is it about somebody dying? Is it about this? I say it's about whatever you want it to be. Yeah, yeah. Because I don't, I'd, I've never analysed it, but no. this is called Can I Tell You? I'm looking forward to hearing it. Stars 
falling from the sky I gotta tell you that I love you And you know the reason why I gotta tell you that I love you It's something I can deny yeah, yeah. I gotta tell you that I love you And you know the reason why I gotta tell you that I love you It's something I can be Wonderful, Thank brilliant you. vocals. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, do you practice much? I mean, that's so tight. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's fantastic. I, I don't mean. No, we don't. Yeah, do you not? No. I, brilliant. It's. We just kind of know what we're doing. Ah, it's, it's great. But sometimes is is that a family <laughs> thing? Do you think that that just makes it natural for you? I've I've heard, as I said in the introduction, family vocals when they come together. For me, they just work. Yeah. Just there, listen to that, the balance, the, the word sync, everything was perfect for me. Like, I think what happens, what turns out is most of the songs fill it with the lead line. I'll do the high harmony falsetto, yeah. people do the low one. We yeah. could swap round, I could do the low one, he could do the high one, yeah. but it's, it's a comfort thing. Mm -hmm. And if we want to make it a bit more hard and rockier, yeah. I'll take the middle line and he'll do the first voice. Oh, right, okay. Top voice, but first voice. I mean, obviously, with the, the amount of times you've performed, you've found your way, haven't yeah. you? Yeah. You've yeah. found your style, your yeah. stamp and everything. I think, I think there's one thing we've worked on, and I think it... it when we used to go to Phil's on a Tuesday night, we used to call it the Tuesday Club. <laughs> and one thing I think we learn is tops and tails yeah. when to come off and when to start and when to push and when not to push right. he'll tell you all about that <laughs> it's, 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 it's a bit like there's a, there's a song and you know somebody said to me what is it and you know, you know roll with me can we do this yeah, yeah. this goes the, the song goes if your body's had enough no it's not if your body's had it's body's had had yeah. so there's like two two notes in it yes yeah, yeah, yeah. and if we all get them right together mm -hmm. then it should sound right that's great that's just I <laughs> and love that's it. kind Instant of harmonies, man. what brilliant. we what we kind of do. Machines don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> don't say what I don't, I don't think they do either, Steve, to be honest. <laughs> so, brilliant. Um, see where we'll move on from here. So, you've got a bunch of songs. Yeah. You, you performed at school. Mm -hmm. What was the next stage for you to go on to? Did you, did you do the big trip to the, the, the paths filled with gold? Did you head down south? Um, or? Yeah, we did. Well, we? well, first step was... We got a, a, a certain amount of songs together. Phil and Paul mainly did most of the writing, and we ended up going into a, a studio in Walls End called Impulse. All oh, right. And we did an Quite acetate. A famous studio, really. Yeah, really. They've, they've produced some really yeah. famous people, i.e., Sting, Brian yeah. Johnson, uh -huh. Lindis Vaughan, right. all these sort of people. And we did an acetate. And we didn't know how good we were. You might need to explain to some viewers what an acetate yeah, is. Yeah, it is. Oh, what's the best way to describe it? It's like an LP. Right. But it's a demo LP. Okay. Um, is that and, those classes of white label in them? Yes. Yeah, yes. And yeah. 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 And um, we'll see we, we did. Out. We did. Ten, was it ten songs? What we do? We, we it was. Just, I, can I, I remember Bob Monkhouse used to have a, a, a thing at the bottom of Bath Lane. I think it was called Changes. Right. It was like a nightclub. Uh -huh. And we went in there, it was July the 11th, because it was May 1971, because I'd been married a year to the day, and we put a gig on, got all our friends, and we made 25 quid. Right. So we thought, right, we're going to go make an, money, we're right? gonna make an LP. Oh, yeah. So we went and made this acetate LP. Excellent. And um, from there, we kind of, we, we, we obviously wanted to move on and develop and, and try and get a recording deal. Um, and through going into there, we got a, a publishing deal with Hazy Music right. in London, because uh -huh. Hazy Music was linked to Linda's phone and linked with Impulse. Oh, right, that was the connection. Yeah, yeah. that was the connection there. And from that, we kind of, there was another band called Little Plum, right. with Roger Askew, Dick, uh -huh. and Tony Davidson in. All right. And I think somebody suggested that they got together with us and we formed Aubrey. All right. Um, and... We put a band together about 1972, and we done the, the obvious thing about getting a van and a P and getting gigs get and all that kind. Yeah. yeah, and we in those days, I think one of the differences is you used to get 
uh, used to send things off to record companies and you got letters back of refusal oh, right. yeah. or acceptance. And we had a van and we had a wooden partition and we pinned all the letters to <laughs> on day because we thought we eventually, wanted, this kind of spurred us on, we were going to get a deal <laughs> to like, get the job in a way. Um, <clears throat> and eventually we did. Mm -hmm. Well done. But we'd done the circuit, you know, um, colleges, universities, that kind of thing. Yeah. But we also still had jobs because mm. I remember I worked at Victor Products in Wall's End oh, and we were doing Sheffield University yeah. and it took a while to get home then we left at about three o'clock and about six o'clock in the morning I took me work clothes with us, me dungarees and they dropped me off and went straight to work yeah, brilliant <laughs> <That's> <laughs> rock, and, I, I rock think, and roll I think, <laughs> I think that tells you a bit about desire and, and wanting something it's the passion of wanting to do the music isn't it at whatever cost actually yeah to yeah. family and to yourself yeah it's, I suppose it's like what, what a lot of people say now, it's you served your apprenticeship right. of travelling up and down the motorways yeah. and, and doing gigs. That's, that's, the way, it, that's where it was. You have to learn days. that way, yes. of course. Yeah. Well, and and what, was, what was quite interesting, you know, we, we've got cuttings in that where I think bands and people make mistakes in their life. It's a natural thing. And we chose some wrong options, I think, mm -hmm. yeah. looking back. Um, I always remember I used to have to go to London to get gigs, but one night we asked the Polytech to put a gig on for us, and they did because we were well in there. Yeah. And EMI flew up from London to see us. Did they really? Right. And the guy got us on my own, and he says, I want you three, but not the band. Oh, right. Makes it difficult. And we chose no. No, yeah. Uh, there was another time when we were uh, signed. We, we, got a record, uh, we, we got a recording deal in 1975 uh -huh. with DGM Records. Wow. And um, Elton John was on the label at the time. He was like probably one of the biggest things in the world at the time. Elton yeah, John, yeah, he yeah. went on to be anyway. And uh, so we done various tours, Fairport Convention. Oh, Jim Capaldi was supported. Those. I mean, that, that's predominantly folk yeah. music well, in that time. But you fitted in why because of the harmonies or something? Because I, 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 I hear your music not as folk, more sort of rock really than. I, I, no, no, I agree. Even when it's acoustic, it yeah, sounds like yeah, it is, you know. It, I think, I think it's, I think, I, I personally think it's, it's pop and soul and rock mixed together. Yeah, yeah. Because it's from the heart. That. You know yeah. what I mean? It's yeah, got yeah. that. And I think what what gives it that definition mm -hmm. is, in a way, is probably my voice is rocky at times. Right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And that's and what that, you hear in the rock. That takes it away from like Sylvia Crosby Stills and yeah. Eagles and that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Theirs is more of a, a sweeter kind of sound. Yeah. But you still got beautiful harmonies, so maybe that's what made the crossover happen. I guess. I, well, I, I think it. I think it was, and I think yeah. in them days, to be honest, we were probably. You've got to remember, you know, we were only in my twenties, and I think, looking back on it now, I, I think we, we are as good now as we've ever been. I, good. Personally, that's excellent. I, th I think that because I think we've matured. Uh, none of us have ever smoked. Yep. Um, we've kind of looked after ourselves, not good. just the way that it is, really. It's we didn't choose to. Isn't it? yeah, I good. think some of it is. Yeah. Um, and we've kind of we maintained the passion for wanting to sing and play and entertain people. Excellent. Well, let's do some more. What's yep. your second song? The second one is a, is a newish song, which we've been doing with the band. It's called Diamond in My Hand. Oh, brilliant. Here we go. Okay. In my mindset, I'm in paradise I have left the loneliness behind I took my chance, got it myself home I saw the light shining through I got a diamond in my hand To ease my weary soul I get taken somewhere else When I hear up the road Got a rainbow in my pocket Been there since time begun This diamond shines so brightly 
as the midday sun ooh, ooh, ooh. All my dreams are different shades of blue Got a diamond in my hand to ease my little soul. I get taken somewhere else where I rock the road. Got a rainbow in my pocket. Been there since time began. This diamond shines so brightly. As the midday sun Got a diamond in my hand. Whoa. Beautiful again. Another beautiful song, man. It's Thank fantastic. You. I love it. <laughs> Thank it's you. Brilliant. Um, so, we've discovered, started off young. You got your gigs. You've been down to London. Yeah. You've, you've had that success down there. Yeah. Or uh, enjoyed the experience, whether it was success or not. You know, whatever happened. It's funny because people, people, people view us as being famous. Mm. That's what people view us. Yeah. yeah. And people, it's, it, we, it just puts a smile on my face when people call us legendary. And I yeah, suppose, yeah. in a way, we're still going, so I suppose we are legendary. Yeah. That doesn't mean to say I think we're good. No. I... It's things what people say about us. Uh, yeah. And, like when it's I'm around teach, it, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. like children in school, Mr. Caffrey, are you famous? I say, well, what do you think is famous? Yeah, yeah. It's going on the television making series, making. Yes, it is. I say, well, I must be famous then. <laughs> <laughs> so I suppose to your public and people who don't do that, maybe we are famous. You've made it. Okay. Yeah, in That's a way. It, in yeah. your way. Yeah, yeah. Whatever way. Yeah. It doesn't of course. Matter. Does it from you know what? Is, what is fame anyway? <clears so. throat> Very true. So it's all measured in different levels, isn't it? Um, gigs. Obviously, you're still gigging now. You have you go out with a band, I know. Yeah. yeah. And you go. Do you just go as a three piece sometimes? Very rarely. Yeah. And it, funnily enough, it it what's quite ironic is we we put the, this band together in 1999. Yep. And Jim Hornsby was our first guitar player. Really? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. Jim was with the boys. Jim seems to connect with many people. Yeah, he does. And, and <laughs> Jim Jim <laughs> helped <laughs> Jim helped cement the start. To be honest with you, he oh, really brilliant. did. And for that, we really yeah. appreciate that. Excellent. Um, and I always remember Jim couldn't make a gig once, and there was just the three of us, and I, and, and and we'd had we'd had the we had we had bass and drums and all. And this woman came up to me and she said, "Phil, 
people just want to hear you three sing songs. Aye. And I said, do they? Aye. Because I kind of like a little bit of yeah. extras go, you know, like... Yeah, yeah. Well, as musicians, we do. I mean, we've talked about this before. I think we? you're right, Steve. I think maybe yeah. maybe Joe Public don't. No, they, they don't. Maybe less. they don't. Yeah, that's. I think you're right. It's strange. So we yeah. don't do many gigs on just the three of us to answer your question, and that's yeah, probably yeah. why. Because I like to have a little bit guitar and a bit yeah. extra. That's right. Not only do we do it for the audience, but we go out there because we want to do it for Correct. our own enjoyment. Well, yeah. If you, if you don't enjoy it, it's, it's not. What's a, the point? Exactly. You might as well have a job, and yes, that's a job that's paying your salary, mm. I suppose, that you're not mm. happy with. No. And I mean, when we, but before we put this band together, lots of people were coming up and saying, why aren't you, you should be playing, you should be playing, and all this kind of thing. Yeah. And I said, you know, I said, it, it, for, me, for me personally, I think it's the same with Pete and Paul, in fairness, yeah. it's got to light us up inside. Yeah. Because if, if the first person I have to please is me. Yeah. If I please me, hopefully I'll please you. That's right. How can you be expected to entertain an audience if you're not pushing it out from within? So? And money's never been, you know, yeah. the, we, we met some young filmmakers and they made a documentary about us That's last cool. year uh -huh. um, in September. And we, we talked about fame, about money and all this kind of thing. And about, I think Pete said the class, the, 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 one of the things about making it. Yeah. And what, come on, what you said? Yeah, somebody says, are you, are you not upset that you didn't make it? And I said, well, what's making it? <laughs> I said, making it is being in my 60s and still singing with my brothers. And Because and, I love them so much uh, and I'm still with them, which is, it. that, that to it. me is making it. Yeah. It doesn't say that you, you've got a lot of money and that you're happy. That's right. We know a lot of musicians who, who are we, still not we've happy. We've seen a lot of people that's made money and been very unhappy. And musically, you? I'm happy. Yes, I would yeah. like to reach lots of people. And you know, again, people say, have you still got the desire to do that? Of course we have. Yeah, it's good. But you have to be realistic. Mm -hmm. And we've talked about this, about yeah. the business. Yeah. And, you know, we are always up for trying new ventures and new things. You give it a go, you try it out. Yeah. I mean, that, that moves us on nicely now into the... The next subject, which is social media. That's the new way, isn't it? Yeah. How people connect. Yeah. You all connected with social media? Can you remember how to do it? Do you do it? I am a little bit. Yeah. Um, fortunately, our bass player, Michael Bailey, is fantastic with it. All right. So we might, might have to get Michael in to tell us how to connect with the social media. Bit. Well, well, obviously... You, You're on you, Facebook. We're right? on Facebook. We've got our own website. website www.thecafs.com. www.thecafs.com. Excellent. Um, we're on Facebook iTunes, yeah. the last CD Brilliant. is on iTunes. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I think you have to embrace it. Of course you do. Yeah, you do have to. And it's, it's the, the vehicle <coughs> nowadays anyway, isn't it, for people to move yeah, forward. Yeah, it certainly is. I know with the label that I run, I can put a single out. And because of how it's connected, you can get people from all over the world tagging and saying, yeah, I like it. Yeah. And when you pass that on to an artist, there's a thing saying that somebody's become your fan because they've heard it on a... You know, you go to an internet radio station, you buy some time or whatever. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And to get that response back, and it's from Japan or China or um, Canada, for instance, and you pass that on to one of the artists, they're going, mm. oh, wow. Somebody it's, out there has actually heard it's my a small music. world. It's tiny now. I'll tell it? you a funny story. Yeah. We did, we did a, a gig two weeks ago in Porters in Tymouth. And Phil decided before the gig... What we do, we get a lot of people who come along to see us and they've got personal songs. And Phil decided to write a list and say, we'll do any song you want. I've done a musical menu and put it right. on the tables. So yeah. that, that, there was like 30 of our songs. Right. Yeah. So the audience could shout songs to us. Yeah. Which That's is nice. So, yeah. so <laughs> we've got a brother who lives in Michigan. Right. And um. by Facebook, uh, we had one of the member of the audience had sent, sent, a, sent a picture over and she, she sent back. Could you do this song? For, for somebody in Michigan. <laughs> From somebody in Michigan <laughs> wanted us to do this song. That's so I just thought how small it? of a world it is. It is and it? remember, again, we're doing a gig at the live theatre and my wife says to me, she says, Phil, you always pick the set. I says, I know I do, I wrote most of the songs. Huh? She says, but you pick songs what you like. I said, well, yeah. <laughs> and I, she says, but there's other songs. I said, well, I know they are. So, mm, so I, got, I got thinking. So at the live, I said to the boys, well, I'm going to, we're going to pick the first, I'll, I'll write the first set and I'll get my grandchildren to put bits of paper on the tables right. and the audience can pick the second set. Oh, that's fantastic. So I collected the bits of paper in and yeah. the lads were saying, what they written down, what they written down. <laughs> <coughs> and uh, so anyway, the first song was a song called Outside Looking In, which was off our last CD. Yeah. And I said, this is for, uh, I think it was Marcus mm. and uh, he's in the armed forces and he was in Afghanistan. Oh, amazing. So his, his wife says, can you hold on? I just want to, 
record it on my phone. So she record it on the phone and send it to him. Did she? So he's got a request <laughs> from us at the live theatre. And he gets it on his yeah. phone. I love that. Yeah. And, but then, then there was a young lad in the audience yeah. who he says, what about Alphabet Song? Now this was from Aubrey, 1977. So you had a bit of history there, didn't you? Yeah. So yeah. he says, it's my dad's favourite song. And I said to Pete and Paul, so we just sang it and played it. We've never done it for 30 odd years. And he, but before we done it, he said, Phil, hang on, please. I want to record it for me dad. Oh, brilliant. And that's what... Is kind That's of how it is now. It's a lot different, but it's, it's good. It. Yeah, <coughs> that's great. So we've gone through it. We've done the social media. We've got a bit of your history. Up for the final song. Yep. What's it going to be? Well, as you well know, I'm I'm doing a solo CD, yeah. the very first I've ever done. Uh, Pete and Paul are quite happy about that because mm. we all move in different areas sure. of life. Yeah. Uh, and in January this year, um, we lost our older sister. All oh, right. So and great. she's. Well, well, one of seven who were all still alive, yeah. and she's the first who's gone. And we came home, Jean and I, my wife, my wife was upset, and I just looked at her, and she looked at me, and I said, you know, you, you can't measure someone's grief by how many tears they cry. No. Well. And I thought, I cool. quite like that, so I went upstairs, <laughs> and I wrote a song called Measure. Measure. And Let this me just is... close it out with one second. <clears throat> yeah. Measure. Well, there you go. That was the Caffrey Brothers. I really hope you enjoyed that. <laughs> Um, they're going to close the show tonight with their song, <coughs> uh, Enjoy It. How do you measure love without a word being said? How do you measure heartache without being misled? How do you measure feeling if you don't see the signs? How do you measure when all you see are blurred lines? Cause you cannot measure someone's grief by how many tears they cry You cannot measure honesty If you've never told a lie You cannot trade in kisses Without feeling in your heart You cannot So don't even start Can I?
I measure someone's grief by how many tears they cry? You cannot measure honesty if you never told a lie. You cannot trade in kisses without feeling in your heart. You cannot. Start. 